Hello, my name is Chris Kiak with Kiak Technology Solutions. In this video today, I'm going to showcase how to use ChatGPT and AI or language learning models to create your own in-house uh, support help desk or Q&A center, question and answer center, based on the documentation that I provide to clients that uh, purchase our training and our Tecla setup for transferring information between MBS, which is metal building software, using their slide rule add-on that integrates and transfers building design and information from MBS into Tecla structures. Now, this video can also be just used with any other sort of documentation or in-house procedures or detailing manuals that you have. And so the concept is pretty much the same, but here I'm just gonna show you how the advantage of being able to upload all the content that you uh, get, and instead of having to search through the PDFs and try to find the answers, oftentimes you can just upload that content into a business or paid version of a GPT or a language learning model, and then you can use that in-house with your own users to quickly find specific things that you need rather than having to search through extensive documentation. Now, I do wanna say that I'm going to be using a business team account of ChatGPT. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that way I can upload files and that I can manage the content within my own organization and it's not publicly trained data. Now, in this particular example, again, I'm using ChatGPT, but if you're on the Google ecosystem, then you could use Gemini. And then if you're on the Microsoft uh, sort of ecosystem, then you could potentially use a Copilot. And you wanna use paid business versions of that to protect your data. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so first I'm gonna come up here and go to the upper right uh, icon and just say my GPTs. And so this is the very first GPT that I'm gonna create on my account. And I'll just say create a GPT. Now, it gives you this configure uh, style screen, which is a bit more technical, or you can just say create and you can actually tell it exactly what you want in more human readable language. Uh, I'm just gonna put some things in here and I'm not gonna uh, you know, type and speak at the same time. So I'm gonna fill things in and I'll explain to you what I've done. Okay, so I filled in some information. Up here at the top, I actually just provided a brief description, and you'll see that this brief description is actually what is shown underneath the title of the uh, actual center here. And at the top, I actually gave this a name. And then I started to put some specific instructions. Now, you're gonna do the best you can to give a starting point on this, and uh, you know if you actually pause this and kind of read what I put in there, um, some high level things are, I just basically said, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be asking questions and I want very uh, specific answers, short answers, bullet points, and I'm even trying to tell this to tell me the name of the document or the resource that was used that I'm gonna upload in order to uh, tell me where it got the answers from and even what section in the document, if that's applicable, like in, uh, for instance, the MBS slide rule setup document that I'm gonna upload. Um, and I want it to kind of just give me references. Now, one of the limitations with ChatGPT is that it can't uh, actually uh, show you the images from the uploaded PDF documents. It's all text and language. So really you're using this to get quick answers or tell you where things are at, um, but you still may need to go into that document uh, to go look at a visual image or uh, kind of understand what it's telling you in the answer. Now. I would say a lot of these questions though are gonna be very quick and it'll actually tell you, hey, go to this menu in Tecla or MBS, um, you know, depending on how well I wrote that information into the document versus just showing it in an image. But uh, I, I just wanted you to know that I tell it here to specifically give me references and tell me where to go um, if I can't get that information just in the answer it provides. And I also tell it to be very specific and just kind of give me a bullet point list of answers. Now I'm gonna see how well it does this uh, based on my instructions, but you'll see that you'll continue to improve these instructions as you start to use the GPT itself. Now then I have some conversation starters and you can actually see that those fill in over here on the right, but each one of these here are basically starting point questions that I might ask or conversation starters uh, to give you an idea of how to sort of prompt uh, this learning center. Now, the next thing here is uh, I'm gonna upload files and I'll show you that in one second, but now there's this capabilities. So I don't really want this thing to generate images and try to show me stuff. Uh, in this particular case of what I'm doing for this example, uh, it, it's not really good for it to try to generate images. I'm not uploading enough content for it to try to do something that has context and makes sense. And so I'm gonna turn that off. Now I might have code interpreter here if I wanted to analyze like the uh, MBS database files, like the sys files and stuff like that. Um, but you know, so I'll leave that on. Maybe I'll have that there. And I don't want web search. You know, in this particular context, I really want the answers to stay within the uh, uploaded documentation and the conversations that I have with the GPT itself. I don't want it to really necessarily go search the public web. Now you may choose to use this or not. 
Um, if you're asking more like general Tecla structures questions, there is so much information about Tecla and like what you might want to do that you may want to keep the web search on so it goes and pulls from videos or uh, Tecla's online uh, support help and uh, kind of, uh, you know, sort of user uh, information center. So you may want that on for that type of thing. But in this particular case, I'm actually going to turn that off and you may want to test that to see what type of results and things that you're getting. Now, I'm going to go ahead and upload documents. So I'm going to go to my files here. I'll just go to my specific folder where I've got this information. And here I'm just gonna grab uh, my MBS slide rule setup document. And so you'll see here, it's like 10 megabytes because there's a lot of pictures and stuff, but this, pay this document's got like tons and tons and tons of information in it. It's basically the entire guide that I provide you with all the troubleshooting and things that I've done uh, with uh, setting up MBS and uh, MBS slide rule and the slide rule INI and passing data to Tecla structures and even some instructions on how to do things in Tecla. Now, I also uh, like that I have another document I'll show you, but let me just upload this first. So I'm gonna say open and then it'll upload that PDF and you can continue to upload additional documents. So I'm gonna upload some uh, database example files. I'm also gonna upload the uh, detailing model checklist that I provide to customers. And then we're going to start with that and see what kind of answers that we get. Okay, so I uploaded some additional files here, including the slide rule INI, uh, some of the Tecla help files on their erection drawing cleanup tools, and then even some example database files uh, that I typically provide as a starting point for clients, but you might want to update your or upload your specific files, especially the ones that are referenced here in the slide rule setup document. Now, once I've got this uh, kind of starting point configured, I'm gonna go ahead up at the upper right-hand corner and press the Create, and then I can uh, kind of choose which specific team members are gonna be included in here, um, or I can just kind of say my entire company, and so anyone uh, can find this and what can they do. Uh, if I want to control what information can be set up in the configuration and I only want specific people to be able to just kind of chat and I'm the only one configuring it, then I can choose the can chat option here and then you can tell it what type of category this is. Now I'm just going to go ahead and say update and then it should go ahead and create that GPT and then we'll start using it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and press the view GPT button and then that should take me to the MBS slide rule and Tecla Structures Learning Center. You can see your uh, main title and then the uh, basically description. And you can even see in here what are some of those starter prompts that I had put in here. So I'm just gonna say, how do I stop washers from importing into Tecla? So let's see what it gives us. All right, so it's starting to go through and give an answer. And it is correct that uh, DT Bolt actually controls uh, how washers are uh, set on, on bolts that are in MBS. And then that actually will, uh, if you do set zero, one, or two on the washers in DT Bolt, that actually does control how slide rule will input and set those on the bolts and Tecla structures. Now, there are some additional settings that I know of in slide rule INI that actually uh, basically control things related to bolts. And so I'm just gonna say, hey, uh, what settings in slide rule INI control how bolts are imported into Tecla and just see what it gives us. Okay, so I'm looking at some things here. Let's just see if this actually is correct and makes sense. So determines whether systems are explicitly indicated. Yeah, so that's true. Uh, there is the system state which can control what type of things are imported, but this setting doesn't really control it. Uh, holes does control whether um, holes are actually imported. Um, and I would never have this really off. I usually want this on. Some people turn this off if they're just using like exports uh, for the welded parts for the AGT machine and they don't really care about holes and bolts and it speeds up the import. Um, and then here, import list profiles. This is really more about uh, what type of profiles are imported. So that's not uh, what I'm looking for. Import files isn't doesn't matter. Bolt, uh, bolt link settings, use MBS bolt links. This is actually what I was trying to get after here in the query and this question. And this is true, this actually forces the bolt links. Um, so it'll take the exact bolt and DT bolt and it will force those using a negative number in Tecla on the cut length field, which will force that bolt length in Tecla. So this is actually uh, valuable. And uh, I would actually go look this up and try to find out more about this. 
Now, the nuts and washers, um, there isn't really anything in slide rule INI that controls the nuts and the washers specifically. That's all about DT bolt. Um, but here you can just start to kind of go through this. Now, I wanted to show some real, real uses, usage of this, right? Sometimes it might send you down a path and I've tried to tell it, hey, don't, don't send me down this path that doesn't make sense or isn't correct. Now, if you do find that it starts to take you down a path and uh, you know it says like stuff that doesn't make sense once you go look in the file, then really you should tell it uh, which of these things that it did return that that was the best result. So that way it'll remember in case another user asks this question later, or if you come back and ask it again, it'll focus more on and uh, kind of emphasize that this answer about the bolt link settings was, was the most important. So I'm just gonna say that here and then I'll uh, tell it to remember that. Okay, so I typed in some information here and, and I told it, hey, the bolt length answer was good and uh, tied it back to DT bolt. And then I told it kind of what it's doing in Tecla to see if it can remember that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and store that in here and just see what it says in the return, rep uh, the return reply here. Great, so you can pause that and kind of take a look and read through and you can see that, hey, I'm, I'm teaching it as I go along, right? So at the beginning, you're uploading the content and sometimes you may not get the answers you exactly want, but you can continue to train that content. And if you're the administrator of this, you may want to test this a few times um, just to kind of like think of some of the common examples and things that your detailers or your users might be uh, prompting and asking about. And then just make sure you're getting pretty good answers here and then uh, just continue to refine and train and store that data so that way they get good answers and they're not hunting things down. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the main GPT itself. So this is like the starting page. And then I'm just going to, you know, I could use one of these starters, but I'm just going to say, uh, where do I go in MBS to run slide rule? And that is one of my questions above, but I just want to show you that I can prompt that and let's just see what I get. Now, I'm looking at this, and this is actually a pretty good response. Um, and I wrote all the documentation so I can see that it's actually giving pretty good responses and how it's pulling in from uh, the data that I have set up. So it is it is an important point to make sure that MBS and Tecla structures are installed and running on the same machine, which is true. You have to have those both open. And that is a question that commonly comes up. Can I run slide rule without Tecla and then just you know import the model later? No, you have to have both of them running uh, side by side. Then it actually just uh, tells you to go to the utilities dropdown in MBS and you should see uh, that run slide rule there. And it also talks about where the slide rule executable and INI are in the MBS installation. So this is actually a pretty good response and it basically kind of gives me um, some, some good level steps of what I need to make sure is, is going on in order to properly run slide rule. Okay, so let's do another prompt and I'm just gonna say, okay, uh, give me the steps of how to best process or you know not process but i'd say best detail a job uh let's say an mbs job in tecla structures okay install the necessary tools right make sure mbs and slide rule is all there uh this is good too creating the model using the US environment and uh, using the MBS uh, specifically role that I've created, that's correct. Um, and prepare certain database files, that's correct. Now, I, I told this thing to be pretty pretty concise as much as possible, so it's not giving super huge descriptive answers, and that's good, so I can dig into any one of these if I want to, that way I don't get overwhelmed. Um, and it looks like it's actually pulling information from my detailing checklist PDF that I uploaded, which is good. And it's giving like you know the, a pretty good Pretty good uh, order. You know, next thing is you're actually going to be doing model checking and adjusting and tweaking the model as needed, and then you're going to run numbering, um, and then drawing creation. That's true. Erection drawings and assembly drawings and single part drawings. That's all actually correct. Um, approve and issue the drawings. That's good. The only thing it looks like it didn't give me here was like, oh nope, it did. Uh, construction package. So exporting the CNC files and the DXF files for plates. Run the shipper report. This is actually pretty good. This gives you a good step-by-step -step of sort of how you're supposed to execute the project. It's not exactly how my checklist is, but it's pretty darn close. So if I was just looking for some sort of procedure here, it would basically give me that instructions and tells me what to do. Okay, I'll do another one here. So let's just say, uh, how do I get sheeting and trim in MBS into Tecla? Very short question. 
Um, you know, this is a bit generic, but we'll see how well it actually uh, returns this. Yep, so slide rule I and I. That's controlling, that's actually a good response. This is actually controlling what uh, weather sheeting and trim will import, and you can tell it to do that or not in the slide rule INI, so that is true. And then uh, this is also correct, update the DT profile.sys uh, file. That's the uh, file that contains all the XY coordinates of actually importing that in. Um, and then see, it's saying to import the model, and then yep, another slide rule INI setting related to importing profiles. So that's correct, because uh, slide rule will actually create those sheeting and trim cross-section profiles in Tecla for it to actually import and create the shapes. Um, so this is correct. Now, let's see, there's some additional settings here, import, common issues, troubleshooting. So the model filter. So this isn't as descriptive as I wanted it to probably be here. I wanted to give me a little bit more information about what's going on, but at least it tells me where to go and what to search for in the document and in MBS that controls uh, you know, sheeting and trim being imported into Tecla. So this is great. So you can adjust the instructions as needed if you want more detailed step-by-step -step, like instructions to be pulled from the documentation, or if you're just trying to tell this to give you a high level answer so that you can quickly know exactly where you need to go and what you need to do. So hopefully this gives you a quick overview of how to essentially create your own frequently asked questions or your support learning center based on the help content that you've either gotten from MBS or from say uh, Tecla or us and then as well as any other internal procedures that are specific to your company and that you want your detailers and your users to be able to come back and ask questions on.